Hello Internet, my name is Kirk Harrell, and this is another video essay analyzing the characters of the Dream SMP. Tommy Innit is one of the most complex characters on the Dream SMP, and that's almost an understatement, considering that from the very beginning, Tommy has been at the center of the lore and has participated in several events that impacted the story in major ways. His character, for the most part, just feels like a main character, even if you don't consider him to be one. But being the main character always comes with a price. Throughout the Dream SMP, Tommy has been affected by people and things in both positive and negative ways. These influences have changed Tommy both for the better and for worse, and today I want to look into a few of the things and people that have impacted Tommy's character throughout the lore of the SMP. A few disclaimers before I begin. Number one, obviously, the Dream SMP is a Minecraft roleplay server, and while the characters may have some of the same names as their real life counterparts, they are definitely not the same entity. I do not speak about the content creators having trauma or fighting in wars in this video, simply the characters that they are playing. All of this takes place completely within the Dream SMP. Secondly, I won't be able to make every possible point on this matter in my video. A lot of you seem to like leaving your own analysis comments, so feel free to do that, but please don't get upset with me for not including it. I don't always think of everything. Finally, I watch a lot of lore streams from Tommy's point of view and I sympathize with his character, so some of the stuff I say in this video might be biased towards him. This is all just my take on his character and how he's been affected and changed in the story. With all that said, let's begin the analysis. The first aspect of Tommy's character that I want to look into is his relationship with the discs. Tommy's discs, Cat and Melohai, have been two of the most important items on the server ever since Tommy acquired them. There are entire arcs and story beats centered around these discs, and they were major focal points for both Tommy's character and the lore throughout seasons 1 and 2 of the SMP. The disc saga began when Tommy said, Cause that's what I care about most on this server is my music discs. And it was all downhill from there. Once Dream knew Tommy cared about the discs, they became an object of power for him to possess, and so the incessant back and forth of the discs trading hands began, continuing through the pet wars and into the founding of Lemanberg. During Lemanberg's War for Independence, Tommy and Dream decided to participate in a duel to decide the fate of the new country. The outcome of Tommy won would be Lemanberg's independence, but if Dream won, it would mean Tommy would hand over Mellow High and Lemanberg would surrender. Tommy lost this duel along with a cannon life, but negotiated with Dream to hand over both of his discs in exchange for Lemanberg's partial independence. From this sacrifice, we can already see Tommy's relationship with the discs begin to grow as a major influence on his character. From the first day Tommy received his discs, he had been listening to them with his best friend Tubbo, forging a connection between the discs and their friendship in his mind. It wasn't a materialistic desire that kept Tommy possessive over the discs, it was what they represented to him. Their time spent at the bench listening to those discs was a defining part of their friendship in the early days of the SMP, and so both those objects, the discs and the bench, have a special significance to Tommy. The discs' specific connection to Tubbo also represent the sway that the discs, and by extension Tubbo, can have over Tommy. It's his care for Tubbo that keeps him attached to the discs, but it's also his care for Tubbo that keeps him under something's control. However, Tommy's willingness to give up the discs for Lemanberg's independence reveals where his priorities were at this point in time. In the days of early Lemanberg, Tommy was still able to separate the discs from his human relationships. He didn't just give up the discs for Lemanberg, but also for Lemanberg, you know? For Wilbur, for Tubbo. Tommy's desire to make Wilbur's dream come true and allow Tubbo to reside in Lemanberg safely took priority over the discs, though he still intended to get them back at some point. He put his care for others over the discs. However, as time went on and Tommy's life became less and less consistent, he began to cling to the discs as something he required in order to be happy, and would put them over other things more and more. After Tommy and Wilbur were exiled from Manberg, Tommy began to lose more and more of the things that he held dear. His prized cow, Henry, was killed by Sapnap, and Wilbur's mental health began to decline, driving a wedge between the two of them. Even Tubbo was apart from Tommy most of the time because of his position in the Manberg cabinet, and so Tommy was essentially left adrift during this era. He couldn't bring back Henry or Wilbur when he inevitably died, but one thing Tommy could do was attempt to get his discs back. He turned down Wilbur's offer of the presidency because he knew his judgment would be clouded by the drive to regain his discs, and happily allowed Wilbur back into his old president role which didn't last long. During the exile conflict, Dream famously gave his speech about only caring for Tommy's discs, as they were what gave him power over Tommy. Prior to this, Tommy had given his copy of Mellow High, which he had regained at some point after trading it for independence, to Tubbo as a symbol of trust and friendship. He didn't want to lose Tubbo like he had in Pogtopia, and so he left one of his most prized possessions in Tubbo's care so that he could be physically sure of that. While exiled, many members of the SMP gifted Tommy discs, but he often threw them away. Clearly, the music isn't what matters to him. 
Again, it's the meaning of the original two discs that holds sentimental value and is able to influence him. Later on, Tommy agreed to team up with Technoblade on the condition that they fight to get his discs back, not agreeing to any of the acts of violence Techno wanted to commit on Lemanberg. Despite everything, Lemanberg was still Wilbur's country, Tubbo's country, and Tommy wasn't willing to betray that. This culminated with the botched Green Festival on January 5th, where Tommy begged Tubbo not to hand over Mellow High to Dream to prove Lemanberg no longer had ties to Tommy. If Tubbo had done this, it would have meant to Tommy that Tubbo no longer valued their friendship and was willing to cave to a tyrant like Dream who was manipulating everyone's view of him. Tommy's perception of what the discs meant had been skewed at this point, as he saw them as everything he had left of Tubbo after he had been exiled. It was then that a fight broke out between Tommy and Tubbo, which reached a climax when Tommy shouted, The discs were worth more than you ever were! It was at this point that Tommy realized what he had said and who he had become. He had begun to see the discs as more important than what they had come to represent, and he was now a creature of greed and materialistic desire. By saying, I'm worse than everyone I didn't want to be, Tommy admits to his faults and realizes that the chase for the discs has made him become a worse person. He then immediately sided with Tubbo, signifying the beginning of their friendship being repaired. He made Tubbo hand over Mellow High to Dream as the rest of the festival goers gasped in surprise. But the disc saga wasn't over. After Lemanberg had been destroyed in Doomsday, Dream left Tommy a message by setting his house alight and commanding him to come to a certain place with Tubbo. Tommy saw this as the final battle for the discs, and together he and Tubbo gathered their strongest armor and weapons to defeat Dream one last time. The final disc confrontation shows so much about Tommy's character. From the way he fights in tandem with Tubbo, to his desire to keep Tubbo from losing his final canon life, to the way he hands over both of his recovered discs to protect Tubbo. When Dream takes them down into the disc vault, he tells them that Tommy can keep the discs that he has laid out on the floor, but Tubbo will lose his final canon life. Tommy immediately backs off. Dream tells Tommy that he saw the attachment Tommy had formed with the discs and witnessed how it had made him weaker, easier to take advantage of. He goes on to say that all attachments make people weak, which is why he constructed this hall of possessions to take control of everyone who has an attachment to anything or anyone. While Dream is right here about Tommy being attached to the discs, he also on some level understands why he's attached to the discs, as he threatens to hurt Tubbo many times during this confrontation, and even later when Tommy visits him in prison. When he's finally about to take Tubbo's final canon life, which Tubbo himself is resigned to, the rest of the SMP members burst through the portal at the end of the room and surround Dream, taking him captive. Tommy takes the discs home and listens to them with Tubbo, finally free from this torment, and speaks to Wilbur. The disc saga speaks to Tommy's character so much that the discs have become a defining symbol for him across the Dream SMP, and even outside of it. They perfectly illustrate what kind of a person Tommy is. He cares for things and people, but the things that he's been through sometimes make him conflate happiness with the wrong things, resulting in harm being done to himself and others. The main influence on Tommy's character that the discs illustrate is his attachment. Perhaps the most impactful part of the disc confrontation is when Tommy asks Dream to toss his items in a hole, in karmic retribution for what Dream made him do every day in exile. However, instead of blowing up the items like Dream did to Tommy, Tommy takes the items for himself and repurposes them as his own armor and weapons. This not only shows how Tommy, in the end, didn't become the person he hated most, but it also shows how his attachments to objects and people only make him stronger. The influences others had on him did not make him a bad person in the end, despite the influence the discs had putting him through so much. When he stands with Tubbo and the rest of the SMP members at the end of the confrontation, they are a united front against Dream, finally taking away the rest of the power that he had and putting him in prison. Hopefully for good. The next influence in Tommy's life that I'm going to talk about is Wilbur. Wilbur showed up on the SMP not long after Tommy joined, and shortly after decided to establish Lemanbury. Lemanberg began with Wilbur roping Tommy into a scheme. He wanted to corner the market on potions, a la Breaking Bad, and enlisted Tommy's help to steal every brewing stand on the server. This singular and setting event set the stage for the two's relationship throughout the rest of the SMP, continuing to the date of me writing this. Tommy follows in Wilbur's footsteps, despite some of the places he goes being morally questionable. It almost seems like Tommy is destined to end up where Wilbur goes, as even after Wilbur died, Tommy eventually followed him to the afterlife. It is well established that Tommy looks up to Wilbur, at least in the earlier days of the SMP, calling him a brotherly figure several times and doing as he says. Even the president position that Tommy was vying for, denied by Wilbur over and over again, wasn't about being president for Tommy. In fact, 
Tommy didn't care about having control or even being part of a country. He cared about having Wilbur's respect. Wilbur's influence on Tommy, especially in season one, is most evident in this back and forth when they had been thrown out of Manberg. Honestly, this scene deserves a video of its own because it's incredibly important to both Wilbur's and Tommy's characters as well as the overall lore. It's where Wilbur's paranoid spiral is finally the most evident, and the audience begins to realize that he has lost hope both in Lamanberg and in the people around him. Wilbur, at one point, asked Tommy, Am I the villain in your history? This sets up Tommy to be boxed in by these definitions of heroes and villains in a world of morally gray characters. Techno, on November 16th, defines Tommy as a hero, and although Tommy has never claimed to be one or wanted to be one, Wilbur's speech here has primed Tommy to believe that now he has to be. Wilbur asked him to be a villain along with him, but now that Wilbur is dead, Tommy has to do what is right. And if, as Technoblade says, trying to do what is right automatically makes one a hero, then Tommy must be a hero, right? The identities of heroes and villains in the Dream SMP is much more complex than this, but this speech essentially instilled in Tommy an incredible amount of cognitive dissonance over the concept. As he and Wilbur fight over the fate of Lemanberg, Tommy physically gets up to leave for a moment, telling Wilbur that he isn't thinking straight. When he returns, Wilbur continues to egg him on about destroying Lemanberg. Tommy fights back, however, telling him that he's being reckless, and Wilbur challenges him on this. He tells Tommy he can tell that he's scared, and then projects his paranoia, telling him that even Tebo is lying to them and could turn on them at any time. This is where Tommy finally cuts Wilbur off, again reiterating that he's being reckless and that there's still hope for Lemanberg. Despite Tommy firing back at Wilbur for this, it clearly affected him. Later on in the story, when Tommy has been exiled for the second time, he begins to adopt a similar line of thinking to the one that Wilbur exhibited in this monologue. He believes that, despite being given gifts and visits by other members of the SMP, everyone has abandoned him and forsaken him. He even feels that Tebo, his best friend, doesn't care for him anymore. Gosper's empty reassurances do nothing to help, and because Gosper barely even is Wilbur, he cannot reverse the actions of a live bird. However, Tommy believed that Wilbur wasn't entirely a lost cause. Despite his increasingly self-destructed behavior and dreams of destroying Lemanberg, Tommy had hope for Wilbur, believing that he wouldn't actually go through with it. The fact that Wilbur ended up being the traitor all along did not mean just a betrayal of the war effort, but a betrayal of Tommy, who believed that Wilbur would be able to turn around after the war. When the TNT goes off, Tommy's expression is entirely shocked and horrified, and the situation only gets worse as Wilbur is killed in front of him. Tommy doesn't even have time to process this though, as Technoblade immediately spawns Withers, and Tommy has to fight them off from what little remains of Lemanberg. Wilbur's speech about destroying Lemanberg and there being no point in rebuilding it is not what stuck with Tommy after his death. In fact, Tommy immediately joins Tebo in the effort to construct new Lemanberg, following the old Wilbur's principles of motivation, desire, and fighting for what seems right to you. It seems as though Tommy refuses to accept Wilbur as a bad person, believing even after his death that he eventually would have returned to his early freedom-fighting ways. This idea persists after Wilbur's revival. When Wilbur tells Tommy he never cared about Lemanberg and actually just wanted to use it to gain power, Tommy speaks to Foolish about this. He tells Foolish, What this is going to be about isn't giving him a second chance, isn't giving him a third chance, it's not about chances. Foolish. It's about making sure you don't give up on the people you care about. Obviously, despite everything Wilbur has said and done to Tommy, Tommy still follows him and tries to help him because he cares about him. Again, going back to the discs, Tommy knows how to be attached and care about things and people, and this includes those that have wronged him over and over again. Tommy believes everyone's got a little bit of good in them. And this sentiment includes Wilbur. In fact, Tommy may have even learned about not giving up on people from Wilbur. Wilbur's revolutionary spirit made him persist with the founding of Lemanberg, as well as with keeping the morale of his countrymen high. His relentless personality could have rubbed off on Tommy, making him believe that everyone is at least a little good, contrary to what Wilbur would tell him later about heroes and villains. And so, because Tommy still believes there is hope for Wilbur, he continues to follow in his footsteps and do what Wilbur asks of him, such as gathering stone and joining his country next to Las Nevadas to piss off Quackity. He hopes that one day he'll be able to get through to Wilbur and reach the good part of him that's still in him somewhere. So for now, he'll continue to let Wilbur influence him if it means that Tommy can help him later. The third influence on Tommy's character I'm going to talk about is politics. 
That's kind of a broad term in terms of the S&P, considering that it was all based upon politics originally, but specifically what I mean here is how the politics of Lemanberg's existence have affected him. The first and most obvious way that Lemanberg affected Tommy was by throwing him into wars when he was still only a kid. He trusted Wilbur enough to go into battle for his nation, and during this battle, Tommy lost two canon lives, both of them to Dream. This is proven to have had an impact on Tommy. This is especially evident in the fact that, to calm down, Tommy counts down from 10, as though he's trying to reverse his memory of the duel where Wilbur counted up to 10. The effects of being exposed to violence and your own death at such a young age have clearly contributed to his PTSD, with both explosions and possibly the musical Hamilton bringing up bad memories for him. Despite all of that, Lemanberg was also a home for Tommy, which is part of the reason why he fought for it in the first place. Even his house was converted into an embassy for Lemanberg, making him an essential part of the country by default. Again, the fact that Tommy traded his discs over for Wilbur and for Tubbo shows that he was fighting to make it not only a home for himself, but for his friends as well. He says to Technoblade at the end of the November 16th war that We've got Lemanberg for each other! For Tommy, it was never about politics, or fighting, or being a hero, despite what Technoblade tried to say here. It was the first place on the S&P that Tommy could really claim to live in and call home, while still being able to do whatever he wanted. He was free from Dream's tyranny in Lemanberg, and despite not really seeming to care about the whole spirit of starting a country that Wilbur was wrapped up in, Tommy was still excited to be free. Which made it all the more horrible when he was exiled. At this point, Lemanberg had become almost a hostile force to Tommy, through no fault of its own. It was Dream pulling the strings once again, manipulating the situation to his advantage to get Tommy exiled. And while Tommy's exile was awful, leaving him with mental scars that still haven't healed to this day, he still sided with Lemanberg on the day of the Green Festival. And afterwards, he tried to stop it from being destroyed, despite everything that he had been through because of it. Because Lemanberg was still a home for Tommy. It was all he had known for months, and it was, in a way, all that he had left of the real Wilbur. So he kept fighting, and after it was gone, he had no place left to go. Following the events of the final disc confrontation, Tommy decided he would build a hotel and retire from being the main character for a little bit. He said several times that he wanted this hotel to be a sort of neutral zone, where people like him who had no homes could come and live for a few days. Of course, there was a sort of sad irony in this for the audience. Everyone else already had a home. Tebo and Ranbu had Snowchester, Foolish had his summer home, Quackity was working on Las Nevadas, etc. The hotel was more of a symbol, Tommy's attempt to finally heal from everything that he had gone through. He was making a place that could be a home for others, yes, but it was really a way to try and reach the part of himself that had no home at this point. It was something that wouldn't get him into any more trouble, or another war, and it would serve as a simple job for him to retire to. When Tommy was trapped in the prison with Dream, his hotel was immediately stolen by Jack Manifold, meaning that the symbol of Tommy's healing was taken from him and he was thrown back into the spotlight of suffering. It was just shy of a grand opening as well, meaning that Tommy had been so close to finally being able to heal from everything. All he needed was the closure from Dream, and he would have been able to move on. Instead, it was torn from him along with his hotel, and now he has to fight and die again, just like old times. And now, when Tommy interacts with Charlie Slimesicle, he's called Tommy in it from nowhere. He has no home. He has no origin that hasn't been destroyed, burned to the ground, or stolen from him. He's alone. And yet, Tommy persists. Despite everything Tommy has been through, he still continues to be a ray of sunshine in the dark lands of the S&P. He still jokes around and manages to be excited about things, like his enthusiasm at Las Nevadas when he visited with Wilbur. Of course, that doesn't mean Tommy's entirely fine. When your character has an entire section for mental health on his wiki, you definitely went wrong somewhere. But Tommy, nonetheless, still has a heart of gold that proves to be something worth fighting to keep for him. His bubbly, exciting personality is such an ever-present feature of his character that, when it disappears like an exile, it becomes jarring not only to him, but to the audience as well. In present day times, however, Tommy's wins, though few and far between, have kept him going and allowing him to maintain that cheerful personality, at least on the outside. And so, while objects, other characters, and broad concepts on the Dream SP may have affected Tommy in a myriad of ways, mostly negative, Tommy is still Tommy. He may not be the Tommy that joined the server in the first place, 
who only cared for his discs and had no idea what was in store for him, but there are still traces of his original self in his character. While his healing arc was stolen from him with his third canon death, we can see from Tommy's present disposition that not all hope is lost for him. He's changed, definitely, and been impacted by the things I discussed in this video, but that doesn't mean he can't try to reverse those effects. And with any luck, both on his side and the audience's, he will. Thank you for watching. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing or telling me down below what you thought of the video. Again, the support lately has been so awesome, and I'm really enjoying all of the nice comments and such. I read all of them, and it's a really nice thing to see every now and then. So, thank you again for all the support on these videos, and thank you even more for watching my content.